So do you too. Yeah. Ooh, fumbling the video. So yeah, I lost my stand. Uh, I don't know where it's at. I don't know when was the last time I used it. Um, but anyway, I wanted to make a quick video. Um, this device that I have here is the Surface Pro X, which is a ARM based device. It's not a Intel based device. So it doesn't really recognize the DM810 um, when trying to tune it. Uh, I had this issue with um, tuning my my friend's system. Uh, I took this computer thinking it would work. It didn't. Um, for some reason, it doesn't recognize the drives. I ended up getting it on my other Surface Pro X, which I don't have at hand right now, but um, I did get it to work. So this video is, is to explain that, uh, walk you through it. Um, this is running Windows. This one is running Windows 11. The other one is running Windows 10. Um, it's not that complicated once you get the hang of it. So uh, I'm gonna try to walk you through it just in case you have this device and, and wanna use it to control or um, edit settings using uh, the DMR um, A10 DSP. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wire it up, break away from the video a little bit and, and come back in once I have everything. Um, you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm gonna be holding the phone. I did, I don't know. I don't know where I left my my camera stand. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to order another one. Um, so we'll get to that one, so just bear with me. Before we get started, uh, this is a web page you have to go to, audiocontrol.com, car audio digital signal processors. You need to find your DSP version. And when you click on it, it'll give you the option to download the software. Um, towards the bottom, I think, somewhere. There you go, downloads. Pink noise, full catalog, DM DSP software. So there's PC and Mac. So technically mine should be running Windows, so we're gonna download it. Um, I'm not gonna make you wait through the installation process. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and install it. Um, and then I'll come back once it's done. So let me go here. I don't wanna show personal files too much. Downloads. Yeah, 810, and then we open the Windows installer. It's gonna pop up this. Oh shit, I clicked on the wrong one, my bad. <laughs> it happens. So when that window pops up, you're gonna go to more info, run anyways, cause fuck Windows, they think everything's bad. And once this installs, I already plugged it in. Uh, power supplies from an old computer, they're very useful for 12 volt applications. Um, do you want to allow this app? Yes. Um, there's many ways to set it up for 12 volt applications. You can find them online. I'm not gonna make a video for mine. I just had to splice these two cables together so it passes current to the accessories and then i cut one of the powers and one of the grounds and then that pretty much gives you the ability to power anything that's 12 volt in your home obviously it's not meant to fully power amplifiers and everything but you know it'll get you testing and and doing stuff like this troubleshooting if you troubleshoot out of your car a lot um it's worth it maybe taking one old uh, i took this one out of an old computer i had or just getting one, they're pretty cheap. You can find them online for 20 bucks, you know, have a little test bench. So I'm just gonna go through here, go through the setup, next. Create desktop shortcut, yes. Next, finish. I'm just gonna go through the installation process. None of this is gonna work. Well, we'll see, I mean, I'll be surprised. But um, currently I have it plugged in. Um, and the important thing that you need to know is this. Let me see if I can turn it up. Where's my volume at? Let me turn it to max. So this is what you wanna hear. You wanna unplug it. Let me put my phone down really quick. You heard that? I'll go ahead and hold it and 
plug it in. See, I'm plugging it in. See how it detects something's being plugged in. Um, that's an important thing. It took a while to launch after it installed, but anyways. Um, the important thing is to, there it is. But as you can see, it says no DSP connected. Let's try that again. Unplugged, plugged in, still didn't detect anything. So that was the issue that I'm having, was having. Um, now if we go here, sorry. So if I go here to look at what's plugged in, I go to, sorry, let me try to get that to focus. Open drivers and printers. It'll kind of pull up everything that's kind of connected. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> System devices. See, so the, so I want to add devices. It detects the DMA10 processor. So it detects that it's connected. But for whatever reason, it doesn't detect it on the software. And it says driver unavailable. Um, do, do, do. From this point, that was where I figured out it was something related to the drivers not being installed correctly. So I did some research. I actually spent like two days trying to get this to work. Um, I got it to work, like I said, on my other Surface Pro X. I'm trying to get it on this one and document the process for you guys. Um, I don't want to get you lost, so I'm going to pause it because I kind of forgot what I did next. But I, I think I need to go to the device manager um, and find all those locations, and then I'll come back. You have to go to the device manager and try to upload the drivers manually. But you also need to download the drivers. So uh, let me try to run that really quick for the ARM processor, and then we'll be back. Tracing back, all right? So FTDI uh, drivers. I guess it uses an FTDI chip on the A10, and it, you need to install these drivers, the, DX, the D2XX drivers is what the DMA10 uses. So you go to their webpage, here's the link. I don't know if this will be um, available later on in the future. I might try to link all, this, all these links in the description for you guys uh, to make it a little bit easier for you guys to find. But you scroll down, down, and you see that they have x86. And now, as of recent, as last year, I think they they um, did the AR the ARM version of their of their driver. So you need to download these, which they're downloading right now. And you need to extract them. So make sure you extract them to somewhere you'll remember. For me. Um, let me go to file location. So they're in downloads. Um, for me, I think I created a folder on the desktop, which is what I'll do right now. Um, new folder. And I'll name it FTDI. Or FTD, what was it? Whatever, I'm just gonna put D. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Is uh D2XX, and I'm just gonna name it that. I'll remember that, and then we're gonna go ahead and open the zip file. Actually, you don't even need to do that. Sometimes I forget how to use computers. Sorry, guys. Um, just go to extract all and you select a location. So, so we don't look at all my files. We're gonna find desktop for me and then the D2XX. And we're gonna select it. And that's where I'm gonna put it, select folder. And extract. And it'll do its thing. That's done. Close it. That's very important because for the next step is where it gets a little interesting. So I'm gonna take a little quick break and then I'll come back. So the thing you need to verify, I'm gonna keep this low, is the important thing. Like I said, when you're dealing with the ARM-based devices, um, 
you need to at least hear this. All right, unplugged, plugged in. Then if you go to your USB, boom, boom, boom. It's gonna open the window before this. So let me go away from that because that one has my name. But I'll, I'll restart from here so you guys get an idea. So you go here, once you hear that sound, open devices and printers. Um, you go a little bit higher to mouses, keyboards, and devices. So pretty much click on devices and you should see this. DMA 10, so it recognizes the device, but driver is unavailable, which means it doesn't know what to do. So what happens with that is when you go and open your program, which I think I have somewhere around here. Uh, let's go over here. Do, 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 do. We'll do the BBM smart. And then I'm just gonna open the app. That's already running. Okay. So we're just gonna open it. And what you get is you're supposed to get USB activity. You're not getting nothing of that. And for whatever reason, it's not detecting it, right? So just connect it, connect it again. Still not detected. So let me show you what you do once you get to this point. Uh, we already extracted our folder. Uh, I'm gonna go into the wide angle. Hopefully it doesn't show off any personal information, but let me close window. So we don't get that one opened again. And now we go to, so we did the whole download and everything from the other videos. Now we're just gonna go and get this running on a Surface Pro X one, two, or the Surface Pro SQ3, which is also our piece. If you go to device manager, device manager, which is in control panel, you're gonna look for this. This is your, let me zoom in there. This is what you're looking for. Let me zoom in even more. You see how, you have that little warning sign next to the DMA-10, that means something's wrong with it. And it wants you to fix it. So you go up to it and you click on this update driver. And I know you're gonna be saying before I click on this, oh, why don't you just do the automatic and this and that, or go and try to, there's, there's a lot of installers, the automatic installers don't work. You need to do it manually. So stop wasting your time with that. Like I said, I spent two days trying to figure this out. So just do it manually, save yourself the time. That's why I'm doing the video. So you go to update, man, uh, update driver sour. Sorry, a little sour. Oh, what's going on with my talking today? Uh, <laughs> and then search automatically, which is gonna yield nothing. Just go browse my computer for drivers. And then once here, you're gonna go to browse. And then you're gonna look for that folder you have in your desktop, which is the D2XX. Just highlight it. Make sure you don't click on anything else. Just highlight that D2XX. Press OK. Now pay attention, because the next stop, the next thing is very important. You're gonna click OK, and then you're gonna go Next. And you should see the background refresh once you click Close. All right, ready? Boom. See how everything went away and refreshed. And now there's no warning light. So if you look through here, there shouldn't be a warning anymore. Once you get to this point, what you want to do is just close it and restart. Restart your computer. Don't do anything. I'm about to figure out that one. So the video probably cut and we got to this page because I accidentally showed my name. So I didn't want to show my name. Uh, there's nothing wrong. It's just, you know, people be savages online. So uh, just click restart. I might blur it out, I don't know, or I might cut away from it and start from the other one. But uh, story time while it restarts. So you see there's still no activity going on. Uh, I haven't uploaded videos for a while. Uh, I know somebody asked, only one person, all right? So it's not like a multitude of people are asking what the hell I'm doing. It's one person saying why I haven't uploaded videos, you know, in one of the comments. It's just a lot of stuff has happened in the last month. And not only that, um, my videos kind of depend on how my workflow is going. So the fact that I haven't been doing videos 
it's been a good sign because that means I've been busy. So I've been working. So that to me is good. I want to always stay busy and working. Uh, we work in construction. So, oh, look. So here's a good sign. See that blinking light? That's already telling me that the driver update worked. So that's going to be your first sign. Let me unlock my thing. I just did with the face unlocked. So we'll start the app right now. But this is already telling me that it's working. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step it up, a step forward because this is the the factory cable that comes with your device, right? Um, if you know one thing about me, stupid iPhone's having focusing issues, is that I'm okay, and I'm gonna give you guys a hand right now. I'm okay with you, everybody saving money. So this device from Audio Control or other other vendors will try to get you for like 30, 40 bucks for this. You don't need a 30 or 40 buck, one of these, all right? We're gonna drop this, all right? Look, it's nice, I'm not saying nothing about it. Audio control does give you a nice long cable. It's hefty, it's nicely insulated. It's it's a quality cable, right? But let's put it to the side on the floor. Now, this is my $7 Amazon data cable that I just got. And we're gonna see how it performs. I have not even tested it, so we're doing this live. I might just be shooting myself on the foot right now. But I'm going to plug it in. I might need my other hand, so bear with me. <laughs> there you go. It's in. And getting the other end. You know, sometimes we buy stuff secondhand, you know, to save the money. There's nothing wrong with that. There you go. We're still getting the blue light. That's a good sign. So I'm going to see if it detects. So this is a $7 cable, data cable. So USB 2.0 because it's a micro this is a micro plug. So I think it, it maxes out at USB 2.0 specs. So if you guys want to know all that technical data. But anyways, let's go back to and put it off to the corner because this is going to have my name again. Now I got to go back to the video and see what fucking shows my name. Great, right? Uh... <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong. I guess I just kind of want to keep my personal information from my online information separate, you know? My presence online, it's different from my personal life, you know? Um, so there we go. I just click on the app. The thing with um, the Surface Pro X uh, is whenever you double click, you're actually starting the app twice. So that's why I got that warning right there. But if you can see, it's being detected. It's now asking me for the code. You see how it says DMA10. And read this. The communication established. Please enter the pin. The default pin is 1234. Mine is still 1234. But you could change it to, so say somebody steals your device, they're going to have to reset it and everything before they get it running. But, uh... I don't even know if there's a way to reset it, but I think there should be. Um, just in case you forget your password too, you know. But there it is. It's establishing a connection. It's working with the $7 cable. So, haha, -ha, You know, and that's only in. So, established connection. It's showing that it's connected. It's transferring. Obviously, I don't have anything coming into the input. But, trust me, it works. So, that's how that gets, gets you to work and... Uh, I'll put, is there any settings here? I don't remember if I've had any settings set on. Oh, I did. I had the Tundra, which had some of the freaking low end cut off. But anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I fucked this one up. Uh, yeah, so that's working. I'm kind of just going to, I wanted to finish the video just because the next is just going to be going off and shit. So I already told you about the $7 cable, right? Um, this is a unit that I bought used. Somebody just took it out of the car. They couldn't sell it. Um, I don't like to take advantage of people. I mean, uh, but let's be realistic. A lot of this stuff, I mean, I've been in the audio world for a long time. It loses value really quick. I understand people out there spend thousands of dollars on equipment. And I, I myself have spent thousands of dollars on equipment, but getting, selling it for a thousand dollars which is pretty much what you pay for, it's gonna be near to impossible. 
Unless you had name brand shit and some idiot with money. But let's be honest, a lot of stuff, from my experience, you know, you could get a lot, a lot more for a lot less, you know? So I paid 250 for this, all right? It didn't have these connectors, all right? So the reason why I paid 250 is a guy was asking for 350, but let me break it down. He had been asking for 350. I had been following the item for a while. He has he hadn't been able to sell it. Um, nobody was offering them or whatever. They people they were offering them low money and he wasn't selling. Uh, whatever the case may might have been, but I've noticed that he had it up for sale for over three months already at 350. So I went ahead and shot him an offer at 250, and he countered me that he wanted at least 300. I told him like, look. Um, you don't have the connectors, which you didn't have. Uh, you didn't have this power cable either. So I was like, there's no way to test it. I'm going to want to test it. And you're no, you don't even have the ability to test it because you don't have the connectors. And he was telling me to buy the connectors and everything. And if you do your search online, and, and honest to God, I hadn't really searched too much into it. These connectors each are like five bucks, six bucks, the cheapest you can find them. And I think the one that would get here the soonest was like eight bucks. So you're talking about eight times four and then the power cable, which is like another five or six bucks. You know, we were already close to 40 bucks and I was telling him like, look, bring it down to 250 and I'll get everything that I need to get to test it out. And sure enough, he did it, you know, um, he brought it down. I do have other DSPs. This isn't my only one. Uh, my friend has one of these, so that's that's why I know. Uh, well, I actually wanted one because I know the new software update that they got. So I wanted to play with it and throw it in a truck too. Um, and one thing I realized is a lot of this stuff is really expensive, you know? Like the cable, the USB cable, that's like 30 bucks. And in reality, if you do your search online, you can save a lot of money. I bought these connectors for, I think, like 8 bucks, all of them. I did a searching online and, and it came with a pack of 10. So I still have some extra ones. And they were eight bucks. They're on Amazon. Um, I forget what they're called. Let me look it up right now and I'll even show it to you. Um, instead of paying, because people take advantage of you, you know? Uh, sorry, reading text message. Uh, yeah, people take advantage of you and, and you know, if. If you're not informed, they'll they'll take you for your money, you know. Um, but if you do enough research out there, you know that you can get a lot of this stuff for cheaper. So my thing is, don't be spending that much money on these connectors. You can find out for a lot less. Um, I'm gonna pull it up right now on, on, on Prime because I got it on Amazon, and they actually got here the next day. So uh, I know people be spending thirty, forty bucks for these replacement connectors when you don't need to. Uh, let's see if the seller still has them. So these, this is what these are. Uh, let's see if it doesn't have any information. Do, 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 do. I know it's kind of hard to see, but all these connectors, it's actually 20 piece, four pin connectors. So there it goes when I bought it last. So it shows that I bought it already. And that's how much they were. Six bucks for all those. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we go on eBay, everything I was looking for that was the same was like eight dollars. I kid you not. For each one. You know, that's that's a lot of money, man. For something and then they charge you like five bucks for sh uh shipping, which this these easily fit in a little envelope. Just wrap them in some a little bit of foam paper and fucking send them out, you know? But, uh, I mean, if you don't do your research, I mean, that's why those people make that money. Same thing with these connectors. You can find out for a lot cheaper. Um, you don't have to be spending a lot of money, you know? So, something you can get deals like that. That's what I'm trying to get at. And going back to the videos of the Sequoia, just how it goes with work. I've been busy. Um, I'm also down to one vehicle. My Avalon got totaled uh, about two months ago, shortly after my... My birthday, I think. Yeah, three days or four days after my birthday. I was driving home from work and I got rear-handed. Um, so, 
I kind of been driving my Sequoia everywhere, so it doesn't sit at home or I don't have time to be working on it and, and having it apart for a, uh, well, for a day or two, because sometimes I'll, I'll start things and I won't finish them. I'll just leave it apart. I can't have that luxury right now. So I kind of been looking for a replacement. The reason, that was part of the reason. The reason before that was um, like in late May, um, I went and did major service on it, which was at the dealer for about a week. Um, before that, you know, this is coming from December this way. I got kind of busy with work. I just haven't had time. I started a few things here and there on my days off, but just haven't really had the time to, to really get into it. Um, I started, well, uh, you know, um, work. Well, I don't even want to get too much into the personal. That's a little bit personal, but you know, um, with all those events, um, and I'll explain really quick just because how the time frame of everything went. I took the vehicle for service, for timing belt service. For you guys that are mechanically inclined, that's that's like a mandatory service for the first generation Sequoias. You know, you have to do it. Uh, my vehicle was low mileage when I bought it, and it's still kind of low mileage for the year. I think it's at one hundred and forty one, one hundred forty two thousand. But uh, and I mean, it's a over twenty year old vehicle, you know. So uh, I bought it with a hundred, a little bit over a hundred thousand miles, uh, a couple years back. And the timing belt was done in 2013 at 80,000 miles. Uh, technically, it's not at the mileage requirement yet, but it is at the year. So I decided in late May, I'm going to take it in, get the timing belt, water pump. They threw in, uh, well, they didn't throw it in. They asked me if I wanted to do a, a lubrication of the fan uh, motor and all this stuff. And I said, yeah, you know, just to kind of extend the life, whatever. Uh, later that I did that because I was going on a long trip down to Baja California. It was going to be like a 500 mile trip. Um, we drove it out there at the beginning of June. We came back and it was running great, you know, but like about late June, we were driving around just doing some errands, me and my wife and, and we were at a drive through and it started to overheat. The first thing we noticed is like the AC started to get warm and like humid. And I looked over because my wife was driving and sure enough, the needle was going up. It wasn't up yet all the way up. It was going up. And I told her, turn it off, turn it off. I just reached over and shut it off. She wasn't, she didn't know what the hell I was talking about, but the car was starting to overheat. Um, sure enough, we were at a drive through Sure enough, when I turned it off, they gave us our food. So I told her, turn it on and immediately park right here. We parked off to the side. Excuse me. The uh the puddle of water wasn't even that bad. So I knew it didn't leak a lot of radiator fluid, but the radiator fluid was boiling over to the overflow tank and the car was overheating. So it was building pressure. Um I wasn't sure why. At first I thought it was uh give me a second. At first I thought it was the just the cap because it was broken. I noticed the cap was broken. And it didn't end up being that. I fixed that. I drove it for a couple of days. It didn't overheat. So I, I had the the confidence to take it to work. Beverly Hills from my house isn't that far. It's literally like 25 miles at most. But if you guys live in L.A., you know it's like 40 to 50 minutes driving in the morning there. Uh, it was like late morning. It was a late inspection I had. And, yeah, so I drove it out there. I had the confidence to drive it. Um, it got me there. But I said, I'm going to get something to eat before I get to the job site. I stopped by uh, McDonald's drive through As I was coming out, I seen the needle start kind of, like, wiggling up, you know. I pulled over in front of the job site, just sat there with the car on, and it started to climb again, the temperature. So I was like, all right, so we're having the same issue. Um, driving it back that afternoon was, like, 95 degrees, so I wasn't even going to risk it. I called AAA. They told me home. I left it here in my house um, for like maybe two or three weeks. So I took it back to the dealer. I, I just didn't have time, like I said. And, and now we're like mid-July. I took it in. They had it for like two or three days. They diagnosed it. Uh, they did the thermostat on their warranty. Uh, they told me that it might be the fan, the motor, uh, the clutch assembly for the fan motor. 
Yeah, I told him just replace it. I don't I don't want to be dealing with it. Whatever you guys think is gonna fix it, fix it. Um, they went ahead and did that. Um, they gave me a discount, obviously, because there was a possibility it could have been the thermostat or whatever. So they they drove it around. It was hot those days. They had it sitting, and they said they couldn't get it overheat. I took it back, and yeah, that fixed the issue. But it, uh, I got it back. I want to say like. Uh, July 16 was like a sat. I think I picked it up on a Saturday. I think it was like July 16, and um, I was at work July 19, 18 or 19. I got rear-ended in my Avalon. So literally right after I got that the Sequoia back for the dealer, my car got towed. Um, it didn't look that bad. Um, I thought it would be able to get fixed so i took some of the audio stuff off but not everything i left the head unit and some of the power cables in the front it was like about i mean with the head unit everything, like 500 bucks worth of add-ons that i had on there and they ended up totaling it they said they couldn't fix it or the total got too high i mean it, it was an older vehicle you know so um that happened i've been driving my sequoia ever since and you know i just haven't had a chance to really do too much with it but uh, I did kind of take the decision that I am going to install a system finally in it. Um, I had been holding off due to me using it all the time, not having time to have it apart. And then finally, when I got some time, my car got totaled. So I'm going to be doing it in little spurts here and there, kind of just try to handle things that I could do um, a little bit at a time. So say I'm going to do the front two door speakers. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to just run the power cable to the back. That's what I'm going to do today. You know, I'm not going to be handling the whole thing at once. So, um, I kind of decided with that. Uh, I told my lady, I didn't know if I was getting a bigger SUV. Cause if I do end up getting a bigger SUV a new, I mean a newer SUV and it's large enough for the family and it's four by four, like kind of like what I've been looking at. Um, then I am going to sell the Sequoia and probably get like a little Corolla or Camry, you know, just something reliable to get me to work, uh, this fuel economical. Um, and if I don't end up getting that and I get, like, I, I've been also looking at CRVs, the Honda CRV hybrids. I mean, those, those are pretty much in my budget that I want to be at. So if I end up going that route, then I would keep the Sequoia. So it's up in the air, but I told her ultimately, if I do end up keeping it, then I will just leave everything inside. The system will stay in there. If I end up selling it, then I'll just take the time. Uh, I'll have the other vehicle, and I'll just be taking everything apart, returning it to factory. Um, I do all my work when I do installations. It's always easy to return to factory, you know. So that's always what I look for: uh, the ability to return things to factory. So it wouldn't be too hard for me to just return to factory, sell it as it is. Uh, the head unit will probably stay in there. I mean, it'll be the buyer's decision if he wants me to throw everything back to factory i can and if they're willing to pay to keep some of the stuff hey i'll sell it like that but the dsps and stuff are coming out uh so yeah that's kind of what i decided you know giving you guys a quick update so hopefully in the next two to three weeks you'll see more videos of the sequoia and me doing more updates on it um unfortunately the avalon r.i.p I gave some of the system away to my <laughs> my uh, cousins. They're like my nephews. They're, they're like a younger generation than we are. They're really starting to drive. Uh, for me, I've been driving for almost 20 years now. So I gave him some subwoofers. He just got an install. I tuned his stuff and everything. Um, he's happy with it. I mean, I just, for me, like I said, this this stuff devaluates. So those speakers that I had in my own were like three, 400. I was probably going to get like 250, 200 for them. For me, it's just give them to somebody that'll enjoy them, you know, and their family. So it doesn't hurt me. So, yeah, um, hopefully, like I said, more videos will be coming soon. And, and yeah, just stay tuned. I do have one video that I didn't upload right before my registration of my vehicle. Like I say, all the bad luck that's been happening. I did record me changing the O2 sensor on my Sequoia. So my registration expires September. So... I had to renew it and I literally like a week before I decided to go take it for a smog check it decided to throw codes and there was a bad O2 sensor um, I ended up fixing it recording it on video I just 
for some reason I haven't uploaded. It's been like three weeks. I just haven't put it together and uploaded it to YouTube. But I'll be uploading that too, maybe after this video. So yeah, I mean, if you guys want to see it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully more content coming soon, guys. All right. Thanks.